I would like to first say that we are recording this uh, open house tonight, which is uh, January the 11th, 2021. And uh, a couple of um, uh, housekeeping. If you have any questions uh, during the conversation, please make sure that you uh, write your question on the Q&A um, you know, icon by clicking the Q&A icon on uh, the bottom of the screen. And we will either answer the question as we move along or we will uh, answer them and we, we will type the answer depending on the question. And, uh, um, and so that's how we're gonna be handling your questions tonight. Um, I want to start by saying uh, welcome. Uh, we are very happy to have you here tonight and thank you for your interest in Lycée Francais. My name is Marina Shane and I am the CEO of Lycée Francais. I have been with the school for eight years. This is my eighth year with the school, so I have a tremendous love and passion for our school and our program. And uh, I'm here tonight uh, with a few people that will also um, present, uh, uh, you know, some aspects of our school that may not be uh, specific, uh, specifically stated on our website, or maybe things that you don't know from knowing us uh, from our community. And so it's an opportunity to get a little bit more deeper into what we do and for you to ask questions about about, uh, um, you know, the, the things that we do uh, at our school. Um, we can start with the PowerPoint presentation, which uh, shows some of our panelists tonight, although we have a few, a couple more people that, are, that have joined tonight for our discussion. And uh, first of all, I would like to present, uh, introduce uh, uh, Danielle Dufourchard, who is our principal of uh, uh, the lower school campus. Uh, Danielle, would you like to introduce yourself? <clears throat> Sure. My name is Danielle Dufasher. You are mute, name. Danielle. At least I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Mm -mm. You can? Oh, I cannot. Ooh. Odd. Okay. All right. I thought we were having technical difficulties. We are all used to that, being in virtual. Um, but I am Danielle Dufashar, the principal of the Lower Campus, Patton Campus, pre-K four through second grade. Um, I have been a part of the Lycée family now almost 10 years. We're making 10 years coming up um, as a parent uh, and have been a part of the leadership team for the last four years. So very grateful to be here tonight to talk about Lycée Francais. Sophie, would you like to introduce yourself next? Hi, everyone. Uh, Sophie Capmartin, the director of academics. This is my second year with at Lycée Francais. Uh, as you can hear from my accent, I'm uh, originally, I'm from France, I'm French, and I work with uh, anything related to curriculum here at Lycée. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenue. Okay, Annie. My name is Annie Nearing, and I have been with Lisa about five years now. I function as the humanities coordinator across both campuses, focusing on English language arts, English language arts, uh, social studies, and also finding cross curricular ties between the English and French programs. And Christina. I'm Christina Dickerson. I'm the admissions coordinator. Um, a lot of you probably have interacted with me um, via email. Um, I would like to welcome you to our virtual open house and thank you for choosing Lise. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Okay, I'd like to uh, tell a little bit about the history of Lycée Francais. We were chartered in 2010. This is actually our 10th year of operation. And we are a type two uh, public charter school, which means that we are authorized by the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. And which means that we are open to all of students in the state of Louisiana. We are currently uh, serving students students from seven different civil parishes. Our first year was 2011 and 12, and we had about a little bit more than 100 students, and today we have more than 1,000. So we are growing, we have grown exponentially. 
uh, as a school, not only in the number of uh, students that are coming uh, to be educated with us, but also in the progress of our mission, uh, which is to be um, an accredited French uh, school by the French Ministry of Education, among other things. And uh, uh, so that we can offer the uh, French baccalaureate uh, when students uh, finish high school. We were uh, first accredited in uh, 2014 and then later in 2018 uh, up to a uh, grade six. And uh, this year, just a couple of months ago, we were actually accredited for grade seventh, eighth and ninth, which makes us the first and the only school accredited all the way from pre-K through ninth grade in the state of Louisiana. Uh, we are currently serving students at pre-K through 10th. So this year we are working on the accreditation uh, for 10th grade. And, uh, uh, and we will continue with our accreditation as we move forward with our school. We are also a certified world language school by the Louisiana Department of Education, which means that uh, uh, when they do their audit of our school, they need to see that we are uh, teaching according to research-based uh, practices in language education, which we do. And we have uh, held that certificate for um, a number of years right now. Um, next slide. <clears throat> Um, our school currently is uh, in uh, a couple of different uh, campuses. We have our Patton campus. I would imagine that a lot of the, you know, participants tonight are interested in grades uh, pre-K and K. That's typically, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the participants that we have, uh, not only. Uh, and the, the Patton campus is at 5951 Patton Street uptown. Uh, at that uh, campus we have pre-k four through second grade and uh, you can see here some slides of our classrooms uh, which are actually you know beautiful because we have walls full of light there's a lot of windows a lot of light and uh, in a couple of, there's another slide coming up next uh, that shows um, you know a little bit more of the uh, campus uh, um, in, and uh, the, uh, the outside grounds etc however I want to mention that our program continues from grade 10 uh, I'm sorry from grade third through currently 10th grade at 1800 Monroe Street we are in the uh, what we call the James, uh, the uh, Johnson building. And uh, this is a two blocks and you see here some, some of the uh, uh, classrooms, the outside and the classroom, the classroom are very large and spacious. And we are two blocks from our future home, uh, the home of the high school, which is the Priestley building. Next slide. That is uh, located at 1601 Leonidas Street. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the, um, the, uh, one back, please. The, the Prisley building. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, this building was purchased by our school in 2015, so we actually own it. And we have been working on uh, uh, financing and uh, architectural plans uh, to not only um, renovate the building, but also have an addition uh, to the building, which you see over here. The intended opening of this building that will be serving our high school is the fall of 2021, so very, very soon. Um, and uh, we're very, very, very excited. So our school basically will be in three campuses, uh, pre-K pre through second grade at one campus, which currently is the Patton Street campus. However, we have also acquired uh, the McNair campus on uh, uh, Carrollton Street, Carrollton Avenue rather, and um, we will eventually be moving our Patton Street operation to the McNair campus and so that we are all going to be hubbed in that um, area of uh, the Carrollton uh, Pigeon Town area with all of our three uh, uh, buildings, school buildings. Um, next slide, please. So our Danielle, school hours. Would you like to talk about school hours? Sure. School hours for the Patton campus um, in a typical year: Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, eight thirty a.m. to four o five p.m. Um, Wednesdays, our dismissal is um, at 2.05 p.m. to allow for professional development for our teachers and collaboration between support teams, um, ELA team, and our exceptional student services team. And at the Johnson campus on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, on um, our upper campus, sixth grade through 10th grade is 8 a.m., excuse me, 
to 3.45 p.m. and 8.05 to 3.45 p.m. for third grade through fifth grade. On Wednesdays, dismissal is at 1.45 p.m. Next slide, please. So if we can go back one for us, one slide. So our classroom sizes um, for pre-K, student ratio, student teacher ratio, we have 20 students, one French teacher and one teaching assistant. For the kindergarten level, we have approximately 26 students per class. One French teacher, one teaching assistant. And for first grade, it's approximately 26 students, one French teacher and a rotating uh, teaching assistant. And beyond first grade, it's 26 students and one French teacher. Uh, the approximation of 26 students in kindergarten and above or beyond first grade is based on uh, our staff, some of our staff members, such as myself. Um, we have our children who attend the school. So that will bring our numbers a little bit higher than our typical uh, 26. Next slide, please. So our school follows Louisiana standards. Um, we align the Louisiana standards which are with our French curriculum standards. We are a member of the Agency for Teaching French Abroad and FISNA, which is French International Schools of North America. Um, for our students, uh, basically our program encourages and increases critical thinking skills. And in later slides, our director of academics will talk about the uh, benefits of bilingual education. So you'll get to hear a little bit more about our college and career program that makes our students ready for um, beyond uh, the lycée. Next slide, please. So now I will pass it along to our humanities coordinator Annie Nearing to speak on reference in reference to English language arts. Good evening, everyone. So um, really quickly, I just wanted to speak about English curriculum and our approach overall. So we do use nationally recognized and standard standards aligned programs. So for example, in elementary, that is primarily the CKLA, otherwise known as core knowledge or amplify program um, and the English teachers receive training in that every year and more or less follow that as their primary uh, curriculum throughout the elementary grades. We do also work to align those units with as much as possible with the French units of study. That's an ongoing process as we as we grow up, as you will. And as as the school, as the students get older in sixth grade on, we use a combination of springboard and the Louisiana guidebooks, as well as uh, some in-house created novel studies by our teachers. Um, and the goal there, I know it's already been mentioned once, but really, you know, we strive to develop those th critical thinking skills in our students, strong analysis, creativity. Um, and also this is done not just in English, but really through a multilingual scaffolded approach to literacy and learning across both curriculums um, with both teachers. And also just to note, when you get to sixth grade on, it, it expands out to include the Spanish teacher and Spanish program as well in that collaboration. Um, you can see the hours per week in each grade level from pre-K four up through secondary. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me via email. Um, it's there at the bottom. Um, curriculum, instructional practices, or hours per week, please feel free to reach out. Thank you all. And uh, so, Good evening again, everyone. I'm Sophie Capmartin, the Director of Academics. I'm going to talk, I'm going to continue on with our STEAM program. Uh, STEAM, for those of you who don't know, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. We have a very rich program for STEAM, or, you know, also it's also known as STEM um, here at uh, Lycée Francais. So uh, it's a little bit different based on, of course, uh, the age of your child. Um, if your child attend Patton, which is uh, remember from pre-K four all the way to second grade, they would do activities or very hands-on activities such as planting, dissection, but they also work on electrical circuits and hydraulics. Uh, for upper elementary, they're gonna the students start working on coding, and they uh, particularly works with the program that's called Scratch. 
uh, they continue on into middle school and we are very lucky because we have some uh, pretty high skills technology uh, tools uh, available at Lycée. We have um, uh, access to 3D printi printing and the students actually take their certifications. They also do some uh, laser uh, cutting and we have some great partners uh, for those uh, certifications and practices. Uh, the con students continue with coding. This is basically also in compliance with both the Louisiana and the French program where coding is very important. Uh, they use Scratch, but they start uh, familiarizing, familiar, fa sorry, familiarizing themselves with Python. And then of course, in high school, they continue with Python. It's a big part of the French program. Uh, and uh, they start working into virtual reality and computer science. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. So this is a slide that presents, for those of you who are not familiar with the French curriculum, uh, it's, it's organized a little bit different than the US curriculum. And then if you join our school, we tend to use uh, the different, uh, talk about the different cycles and the different acronyms that are uh, um, on this slide. So in the French system, we are um, four cycles and then we move on into high school. So cycle one, is actually for pre-K four and kindergarten. Uh, then we move on. So it's really about like becoming a student at school. Students learn through playing. It's a lot of hands-on activity, lots of like small, um, uh, um, small circles uh, type activities. Um, so then we move on into cycle two, which is called the learning foundations cycle. So that's when really students uh, gain their uh, early literacy skills for uh, you know reading but also for math they work it works into all of the basics so we have first second and third grade that are part of uh, cycle two if you are in the french system those years are called cp ce and co2 so typically like a lot of our french teachers refer to their grade level as the french name and then cycle three would continue on it's fourth fifth and sixth grade it's the, the, it's called the cycle of consolidation consolidation of learning basically students learn all of their foundation um, gain basically all their foundational 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 skills <laughs> sorry for, sorry for the pronunciation in cycle two and then basically they continue and they strengthen their skills in cycle three as you might notice sixth grade in the French system is still part of the cycle three. So the idea in the French system is really to help the students transition as easy as possible from those elementary years to the years in middle school. And then we go into cycle four with what is called collège in, in French, so not to be confused with the college. So collège in French is really the three years uh, uh, of um, remaining of middle school. So we have seventh through ninth grade. So that's when they're gonna be finishing their college. And then other difference, students um, finish middle school in ninth grade in the French system. And then uh, the high school years in France start in 10th grade. So you have all of this going on. Uh, could we move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. So a little bit about our teachers. So be, because we are a French immersion school, uh, we have a lot of French native speakers amongst our staff. Most of our teachers are actually uh, uh, recruited through the Codophil. Codophil is a council for development of French in Louisiana. And they conduct interviews, be, um, Mostly, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like across the world, but most of our teachers actually come from Europe, but we also have uh, teachers that are French speakers from other areas uh, of the world. Um, those teachers are um, highly, um, highly um, proficient, and then they, they need to, in order to apply to the program, they need a minimum of three years of experience in teaching. Of course, they need to be certified teachers, and as I mentioned earlier, they come from different Francophone regions of the world. Uh, next slide, please. Thinking outside the classroom. Um, yes, so, sorry. yes, Marina. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to, I, I actually just, oops, sorry. 
Sorry. I just actually wanted to answer a question that's on the side, on the chat, which was about, okay, thank you. It was about how many teachers and, and teaching assistants we have uh, in pre-K and K. We have one uh, French teacher and one teaching assistant. We also have one uh, English language arts teacher. And uh, in uh, first uh, um, in grade we have, uh, in second grade, we also have one French teachers one French teacher and one English language arts teacher and a shared teaching assistant. And so that's to answer that question that came through. Um, I want to talk uh, uh, about thinking outside the classroom, which is uh, the signature uh, program of uh, our school. Uh, we believe in uh, students uh, being able to be outside of the classroom, particularly because if they have uh, experiences that are outside of the classroom, also this helps uh, with uh, uh, accessing uh, uh, different vocabulary, different structures, uh, so that helps uh, their linguistic development. But not only that, it's about uh, giving them authentic experiences, hands-on and experiential, experiential experiences that will stay with them for the rest of their lives, really. So we have a very strong partnership with the Audubon Nature Institute. And in uh, grade one and in grade uh, three, students spent quite a bit of time at the uh, zoo. We actually have a dedicated classroom there and students don't even come to school. First graders stay at, in, in that classroom for, uh, and, and learn at the zoo uh, for two full weeks and in grade three for a whole month. Uh, the curriculum was, of course is adapted during that time. And they learn a lot of things uh, that, that have to do with environmental studies, sustainability, uh, earth science, and of course, a lot about animal science and different environments. And so they, they, there's a, a great amount of learning uh, that goes on there and that is scaffolding between the first and the third grade. Uh, again, um, with the, the uh, Audubon Nature Institute, we continue that growth uh, at the aquarium. We also have a dedicated space there and it's a multi-week program as well. And students uh, learn uh, anything from chemistry of the water, biology of the ocean, geo geology of the ocean and much, much more. And uh, they are, um, you know, doing scavenging hunts. Uh, they they dissect sharks, uh, and then their culminating experience really is uh, swimming in the tanks with the fish, which is a lot of fun for everybody, including the teachers. Uh, in second grade, uh, there's uh, an art experience uh, with the uh, Ogden Museum of art, uh, Southern Art as our uh, partner. Uh, students study specific uh, artists. Uh, they get inspired by, um, you know, what they see and what they learn. And then they go in the studio and they produce their own art inspired from, uh, by the work of the artists that they study. They produce uh, typically five or four or five uh, works of art. They select one uh, that will be then displayed uh, for a couple of weeks at the Ogden, we do a big celebration, we do an opening, everybody has their piece up with their name, etc. So for a second grader, it is an incredible experience, as well as for the parents. It's a wonderful celebration of learning and, and of, uh, um, you know, really diving into the arts. In fourth grade, students learn pretty much everything there is to know about the history of our city uh, and through uh, visits to museum, uh, visits uh, again to the, any historic sites in site in the French Quarter. We uh, partner with the, the New Orleans Jazz Museum at the Old Mint and, uh, that, and they host us there. We have a specific, again, dedicated space. And of course, they learn also about our, our state and, and, and our country as they study history. Uh, in sixth, uh, seventh, eighth grade and, and up, and even in high school, we still have a number of uh, uh, what we call thinking beyond the classroom. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then again, we have a, a number of partnerships with the and where students study anything from, uh, um, you know, sustainability, uh, food, uh, in, and, uh, you know, they, they work on a green, greenhouse project, uh, they work on clear water projects uh, and they do a lot of uh, career as exploration as well as they are uh, working on these uh, uh, beyond the classroom activities. Uh, career is very important and we infuse learning about careers in all of these activities and so students can see 
for example, at the zoo or the aquarium, who does what, who decides what fish or animals are eating, the veterinarian, those who take care of the animals, uh, how to run a zoo. Uh, they, inter they have interviewed Ron Foreman in the past as well, who is the president of the Audubon Nature Institute and uh, to learn about how things are run and, and what happens, who does photography, for example, at uh, uh, the art museum or at the old mint. And so they get to know lots of things that perhaps that they're not exposed to in their own home or within the confines of their own families and friends. Next slide, please. <clears throat> These are some pictures of our students uh, at the art museum uh, on the, the top uh, left uh, at the aquarium, on the top right, and then at the zoo and at the aquarium at the bottom. As you can see, students directly interact with the animals. They come to their classroom, they can touch them, they can pet them, and they learn a lot about them as well as to how to classify them in uh, the animal world. And with that, you know, I mean, thinking outside a classroom is certainly uh, something that we're very proud uh, to offer to our students. But in the kinder, in pre-K and in K, and also, you know, during the, the, the time that other grade levels are with us, uh, their field studies are not just uh, limited to thinking outside a classroom activities. We do a lot of uh, field trips. Uh, we really believe in uh, being out there and exploring the world. Uh, and so we provide students with a number of opportunities of exper experiential activities and also service learning activities. Uh, for example, um, yes, we go to Whole Foods, for example, to do um, activities or learning uh, um, units about food, uh, the zoo, the museums. Uh, we go to the Britannia Theater to see um, um, movies in French, we go to Noma, and then when they get older, the Laura Plantation, the Whitney Plantation, World War II Museum, uh, the Louisiana um, uh, Public uh, Orchestra, the LPO. And, uh, uh, but also, for example, we uh, go to the Heinkel Home, which is a, a, nursing, a nursing home that is not far from a school. And so when, for example, students uh, uh, write poems or, you know, do their, their art at the Ogden Museum, then they go visit the residence of the Heinkel home and they sing songs and they give uh, letters and uh, they write poems or they give their art, which is uh, a beautiful thing to see, uh, you know, and the interactions between the residents and our students. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. And then of course, uh, high school, uh, we are currently offering 10th grade. We're very proud of uh, the progress that we have made at our school. Uh, and uh, again, uh, it's a pre-K fourth, 10th grade program that we currently offer in French immersion education. Uh, the accreditation goes all the way through ninth currently. And uh, um, again, uh, our a lot, of our, a lot of our teachers, a number of our teachers, and certainly all of the core content teachers that teach in, they must teach in French, uh, are from uh, uh, primarily France, but also other French speaking countries, and they are certified by the, uh, um, the French teacher certified by the French Ministry of Education. And, uh, and so we in high school merge uh, our Louisiana curriculum, making sure the students have a very strong, uh, you know, graduation path and, uh, uh, and uh, as well as, uh, you know, the path to obtain the uh, baccalaureate. Uh, so lots of uh, development on our end and lots of learning and studies for the students and it's a very rigorous program. However, um, the baccalaureate path is not the only one that they can follow. They can choose to be just, uh, you know, in, in an immersion setting and having the uh, Louisiana um, diploma in an immersion setting, which still uh, allows them to uh, have uh, AP uh, credits in French, for example, and the seal of biliteracy on their diploma. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue on and present some of the benefits of immersion. This slide is kind of like going over some of the very general benefits. And then the next one will dive a little bit more into the cognitive benefits of being a balling, being bilingual, basically. So um, some of the data presented on this slide really emphasize the fact that we are becoming a society where you have more and more uh, 
people speaking several languages, being bilinguals. And of course, being a bilingual citizen in this context is a huge advantage. So of course you can think of, I mean, even if you're just looking for pre-K-4 right now, if you're looking at long-term benefits, of course you can envision like a lot of career benefits of being bilingual. Also, if you learn, if you're already bilingual, like French and English, uh, learning a third language comes so easily. So you can like typically our uh, bilingual students uh, learn Spanish very, very easily. Um, not only you are bilingual if you go to a French immersion school, but you are really like bicultural because, uh, you know, your teachers come from different cultures and you are also uh, familiarize with a, a different curriculum, which is a French national curriculum in addition to the Louisiana curriculum. So all of this uh, create that uh, really rich exposure to, um, to a, a different culture. Um, as I just mentioned, you know, uh, students being in a French immersion setting, as opposed to like learning French as a foreign language in a, you know, if you take French, it really uh, built the student confidence in expressing themselves in a foreign language. So, of course, in French, but, you know, then it transfers to any other language, foreign language that they learn. Uh, as we are building our high school, we are in communication with a lot of admission directors at universities and colleges that really emphasize how um, strong the uh, admissions of uh, students coming from uh, immersion programs are for universities and are basically um, appealing as those students. Um, for, on the next slide, it presents a, a couple of the cognitive benefits of uh, being bilingual. Um, it is uh, several, several studies uh, acknowledge that, you know, our bilingual students or being in an immersion setting really uh, increase language skills overall. Students gain more vocabularies. They have an improved memory. They also better at problem solving. Uh, their cognitive flexibility is higher compared to mono monolingual peers, basically. Uh, multitasking comes much uh, more easily to those students and overall and then you can uh, it appears clearly in our test scores for leap for example uh, they have uh, improved they have uh, better reading and writing skills when compared to monolingual uh, students uh, so, so you know i went a little bit quickly but those are um, some of the main benefits of, of french immersion education I believe we have I believe we have some, some I'm sorry, I believe we have some slides on uh, uh, ESS. Um, um, oh okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so what we're trying to do, and I'm uh, apologies for the uh, for the uh, technology here, um, we have a, a, um, a video, and I'm not sure that the uh, this will be a day in the life of a kindergarten student. I don't see the audio, so Elaine, do you think we can uh, maybe put it back and see if we can uh, plug in the audio? Uh, I guess uh, the best thing that we can do is to narrate what we're seeing. Uh, this is students uh, that are, uh, this is typically a morning in the class for students. You saw students coming in uh, the building. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, what happens when they come in the building. They have a little bit of uh, play time, independent play time until they're ready to uh, be in the classroom in group together. When they're in group, they typically do uh, very specific activities. Uh, where they um, uh, they learn um, like uh, they, they do for example attendance uh, and by doing attendance they learn the ABCs for example uh, they learn to count uh, here it is in the morning when they come in um, 
they learn to count, they learn about the weather, uh, and they they learn uh, numbers uh, um, in, in in very different fashions. Uh, um, they use they do dates of the of the uh, of the day. Uh, when they do attendance, for example, they count students and then they count how many are absent and then they learn subtractions that way, um, and so on and so forth. This is our cafeteria. Uh, we will talk about lunch uh, that we serve uh, later on in the appropriate slides. Uh, these are students that are coming in in the morning in our hallways. Um, and uh, these are students that are being greeted by our teachers who are waiting for them as they come in and give specific one-on-one -on -one, um, greetings as they come in the morning. Um, <clears throat> So they ease into the day again with fun morning activities. In this case, you see students are playing with uh, shapes and blocks, but there's, there's all kinds of activities. Some students, these students are learning calligraphy in French. Um, uh, after uh, calligraphy, of course, is part of the coursework. This is some cleanup time. Students learn to be independent, they learn to uh, where to put things, where things are, they learn to um, manage their space. And then here it is, taking attendance. Uh, the teacher is saying, we're going to see how many uh, kids are going to be in the class today. And they also learn to say particular structures, like these are students that are learning French. And so they're saying, my name is, I am, um, uh, today's uh, uh, day is and so very similar structure that then teachers scaffold and they continue to expand until students learn more and more and more and they bring in um, you know more uh, structures and more vocabulary into what they do and that's how students grow into the language. Um, Here's a teacher who's doing a, 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 I wish you could hear that. However, this is on our website and you can see it, but the teacher is basically teaching the date uh, and she's having a whole discussion with students in French, in the French language. <clears throat> and uh, um, the student says she's saying something and writing something and the student is saying, no, that's not right, it's wrong. And so uh, she's saying, Valerie, how do we write 16? And so Valerie res responds and uh, the teacher makes mistakes again. And the students are like, no, that's not right. And they say all of this interaction is in French. And this particular video was shot in, uh, in January. And so uh, you could see that by January, even though um, you, know, the, the, you, you can see critical thinking at play with students in a, an immersion environment. Um, there are several activities that do students do, um, you know, in uh, math and vocabulary. That will be um, uh, they do art, of course. Um, they have a, a, a busy morning and they have recess. Uh, we will talk about recess uh, later. This you can see in the background was uh, the imagination playground, like big, big, large blocks. So the students used to make all kinds of things and they have a lot of fun. This is our Chateau Lycée, our playground. This is our computer lab. And this is like how they like learn, to learn by playing. So play a base education is a pretty big in pre-K and NK when they're younger for sure. That was our resto again. And, um, and after lunch and recess, we have a little bit of quiet time. And then we have other activities such as music. We have a music teacher at each campus that is a native speaker and uh, uh, teaching teaches music in French and this is an example of motricity which is movement but the movement you can see how the child has uh, their legs in a triangle for example the teacher puts circles on the ground and so the teacher is uh, teaching more vocabulary such as like the vocabulary of shapes for example by still doing a, a lot of movement um, the video is over um, and we can take that off. And uh, we can uh, pass the baton to Miss uh, Danielle, who is going to be discussing our, you know, our uh, program, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, Exceptional Student uh, Services Program, and uh, um, talk to you more about, you know, sp specific services that we offer to our students. Thank you, Marina. Um, for our diverse learners, uh, our program is called Exceptional Student Services. 
um, in order to provide these services, we have a director of exceptional student services, uh, a coordinator of exceptional student services at both campuses. Uh, and we have uh, special education teachers, but they're called ESS teachers for ex exceptional student services teacher, uh, academic interventionists, ESL teachers. A part, a part of this umbrella for exceptional student services is also the gifted and talented. So we have gifted and talented teachers, a behavioral lead, uh, speech and language pathology, pathologist, and then an occupational therapist and physical therapist. Next slide, please. So a part of this exceptional student services uh, team department, uh, we have response to intervention, um, which which actually is RTI. We integrate the assessments and interventions to provide, to provide basically a multi-tiered system so that we can provide um, accommodations for students if needed in order to reduce behavioral challenges. Under the special education umbrella, it's no cost to parents and it's designed uniquely for the needs of our students. Um, and it can include, include related uh, services such as uh, speech pathology or um, also PT. We also have section 504, which provides those accommodations for students within their learning environment for students with disabilities. And then we have what's called SAT, which is a SAT meeting. It's the student assistance team. And that team encompasses the parent, um, our leadership team, our teachers, our um, exceptional student services department. And this team meets together um, based on data and these decisions are student focused so that we can drive decisions in order to uh, provide supports for our students. Next slide, please. A part of overall school um, progress and screening and monitoring, we provide uh, beginning of the year benchmark assessments, middle of the year benchmark assessments, and also end of the year benchmark assessments. A part of this progress monitoring is basically so that we can inform instruction and also be able to look at the data so that we can see exactly where students are to be able to provide supports if needed. We provide teacher observations and feedback during this process. And again, those benchmarks are really for teachers to be able to look at their instruction to inform instruction and then also in order to understand the growth of our students. Next slide, please. So student services, I'm going to talk a little about, bit about student services and then I'm going to hand it over to our Dean of Student Culture. I actually see a picture of her there so she'll get to explain about circles. So in addition to our exceptional student service department, uh, it also includes our Dean of Student Culture, our playground coach. Um, we have a behavioral lead on staff, a school counselor, school social worker, uh, school nurse, director of extended day programs and what that will encompass would be after school and before care programs, enrichment programs, and then our coordinator of transportations and meal service. Um, I'm going to hand it over to our Dean of Student Culture. Um, she'll talk a little bit about the picture below, which is actually uh, Maria Isabel, she's leading a circle with our students. Um, Danielle, there's one parent who wanted to know more about gifted and talented. You wanted to answer that question? Sure, we, I, I, let's see. I think someone answered the question, um, but for gifted and talented, there's a referral process that students would have to go through. Um, and based on that referral process, uh, from there, it would actually be, it depends on what gifted and talented program you're talking about. So we have gifted and talented for art, gifted and talented for music, or gifted and talented for uh, academics. Um, I can basically send you information to our director of uh, exceptional student services to give you more information. So um, I've been, my name is Marisa Bell. Um, I've been at least say this is my second year and I'm really excited to bring um, restorative practices approach um, and kind of strengthen um, that part of our school culture. Um, and so, you know, when we talk about school culture, what does that mean? Um, that means the feel when you walk into the school, the interactions students see between other students and between students and teachers and between teachers themselves. And so that we're all working on um, that culture and how we treat each other, what we model with each other um, and our interactions. And 
so we um, we offer um, we offer professional development for teachers in trauma awareness and restorative practices and um, developmental approaches for classroom management and student engagement. Um, we do team builders as staff um, to develop that aspect of school culture. And then for, for with students, we do um, preventative activities to kind of build their relationships and their rapport and their social skills with um, their, the, their classmates. And so we have social emotional learning classes um, where you see that picture of me um, leading an activity with some students. We, we have circle sharing time, um, and then we teach a lesson on. Um, for today, I taught um, a class on um, thinking ahead if something would be a good time or not a good time to do something, or if something was fair when you're resolving a conflict um, or making a decision. Uh, then we also, um, our entire behavior process is also um, modeled on giving students a learning experience. And so, um, when a student makes a mistake, um, they're given an opportunity to um, reflect and make amends with the person they harmed so that, um, so that even in our mistakes, we're having a learning process and developing community. Thank you, Mighty Isabel. Next slide. If you want to talk about recess also, I always say that recess is my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the day because I get to, you know, have structured play activities with students, but uh, I'll let Mighty Isabel take this slide for us. Sure. Um, we have um, our physical educator, um, Coach Jana, who is embedding social emotional learning um, into PE and social skills into PE. And so she's teaching the students all kinds of different cooperative games from Playworks or from different social emotional learning curriculums so that when they have recess, they um, have these activities that they can do together. Um, we have three recesses a day. We have a morning recess that's 15 minutes long and an afternoon minute, um, recess that's 15 minutes long and then lunch and recess combined are 45 minutes long for students, um, which compared to other schools I've worked with in, in um, you know, our region, that's, um, we were very generous with our students about playtime because we know that um, it's just part of how our brains work. The brain science shows us that students need time to digest um, at, as part of their learning process. Um, and again, um, students have opportunities to learn through um, whatever conflicts come up on the playground so that they're learning to say, I don't like it when you did this next time, I would like you to do such and such or um, when such and such happens, I feel this or this is what I need you to do to make things right. Or um, they're stepping out of recess to reflect and practice how they should be with their peers before they're stepping back in with each other. Next slide. Go to the next slide. All right, so before and after care program, um, our extended day programs have been suspended due to the COVID safety precautions, but in a normal year before care starts at 7, 8, 17 a.m. and after care runs until 6 p.m. and it, it includes a snack. Um, we have monthly contracts and then occasional drop-ins if a parent would like to um, have a drop-in for their child during uh, the month. For our school, we have discounts for families qualifying for free lunch. It will be 60% discount on before and after care programs. Families qualifying for reduced lunch would be 40%. And then families with multiple children, there's a discount of 20%. Next slide, please. Some of our enrichment clubs um, that we have in a, a normal year uh, would be soccer shots is one that my boys love, uh, yoga, uh, chess also, um, Vamanos Nola, which is a Spanish language club. We also have math and science club, which is math science, coding also, and philosophy kids was, was a really great program we had last year where we partnered with Loyola University uh, for our students with reading and philosophy. Next slide, please. All right, so Resto. You've seen some pictures of our students in what we typically call Resto, which is our cafeteria. 
We've partnered this year with Genuine Foods. Uh, the meals that they provide are well-balanced, healthy. I will say they are delicious. I typically eat um, multiple times during the week. So um, I have tested, uh, taste tested the food um, and our students love it also. Uh, Genuine prides themselves on providing fresh meals daily. Uh, the meals are actually cooked within our uh, cafeteria areas, not reheated. Um, and there's a daily menu that's posted and st staff and student are always able to provide feedback on those meals and those are taken into consideration when the meals are prepared. Next slide, please. So just some more information in reference to our food. We have fresh fruit, um, no fried foods, no hydrogenated oils. Um, and there is a vegetarian option. Uh, the monthly menu is posted on our website and we typically use in order to make payments what's called My School Bucks through the website. And we provide, we do participate in the free and reduced lunch program. Next slide, please. Transportation. So we do provide transportation services for any student who lives within a mile of the campus um, and lives within Arlene's Parish. And it is at no cost to any of our families who reside within Arlene's parishes, Arlene's Parish, excuse me. Um, bus sign up is required during the summer um, so that we can create the routes for our students and any new bus requests or stops changes throughout the year um, has a, a, a turnaround time of about two weeks or so. Um, but we do provide transportation to our students who live within Orleans Parish. Next slide, please. We partner with All About Kids, which, are, which is our transportation company. And we consider our bus drivers as a part of our Lisa family um, who um, are able to help to keep our students safe as they are driving the bus. If you want more information in reference to our transportation uh, handbook and our policies, our handbook is posted on our website. And we can also put in the chat the name of an email address of our transportation coordinator. Next slide, please. So parent involvement, who doesn't love parents? I am a parent of Lise, and the top slide that you see is a picture of our annual Marche de Verre, which is our French winter market. Um, it looks like you see snow. Every year we do have fake snow. Even in New Orleans, we have snow. Um, it's a huge fundraiser where uh, our community gets together to uh, raise funds for our school. Parents can be involved in our PTO, which is called La Liaison. Uh, also, parents can be involved by being room parents. The bottom slide that you see is a picture of our dad's club. And typically, our dad's club would meet once a month in order to work on projects for the school. Uh, from um, benches, they often have a, um, a bingo night for kids. In addition, they have a steak night also for the dad. So it's a wonderful uh, addition to our school to be a part for all of our parents to be involved in La Liaison and all of the fundraisers in the Dads Club. Next slide, please. I'm going to turn it over to um, Christina Dickerson, who is our admissions coordinator. Good evening. Um, the One Act process for Lisi uh, main round launched on November 20th of 2020. And Lise is considered an early window school. So our one that process closes on January 15th. Um, and it does that to give us the ability to be able to test students in grades first and above um, that are looking to become a part of the Lise, um, applying to become a part of the Lise family. When you are going to your one app and completing your application um, and you're applying for grades pre-K, uh, Pre-K non-tuition, you want to be able to, you want to use the code 711. 711 is also the code that you would use if you're applying for kindergarten um, through 10th grade. Our code 722 is our tuition-based pre-K code. Um, next slide. So pre the pre-K app, all applications for one app are submitted online. Again, as I said before, the tuition free code is 711. The tuition base code is 722. Um, we don't, 
we don't decide who's tuition based and who's tuition free. When you go to complete your one app at Enroll NOLA, um, you really you will be able to uh, figure out because there are income levels that they give you on the one app site, and that allows you to uh, decide if, or decipher if you are uh, if you are be able if you are able to apply for tuition free or tuition based pre K four. Next slide. Pre-K-4 typically has 80 seats, with 20 of those seats being allocated to our tuition-based students, and the other 60 seats are tuition-free, LA-4 seats. Um, Pre-K-4, the 20 tuition-based seats are not guaranteed a spot in kindergarten. They will have to apply for the next year in order to go into kindergarten. However, if they have a sibling, they can... Um, they can use sibling priority, uh, and that just requires submitting some documents to verify that they currently have a sibling attending least thing. Kindergarten typically has 126 seats. If 60, if all 60 of our tuition-free students move up to kindergarten, we have about 66 seats left um, for new applicants. Uh, so and then the grades one through 10, as we stated earlier um, in the presentation, the number of students per class varies per grade level. It just, it, it correlates with how many children move up from year to year. And it also um, is based upon if we have some staff members that have their children attending least day. Next slide. So the cutoff age for pre-K-4 is your student must be four by September 30th, 2021. If they turn four on October 1st, they will not be able to enter to pre-K-4. They will have to wait for the next year. Next slide. This is our last slide. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask us, you can um, email us at uh, bit.ly at LFNO access, or you can email at admissions at LFNO.org. And any questions can go there and we will gladly answer them. Um, and don't be shy. Okay, this concludes our presentation for today. We have a couple of minutes. So I see a couple of uh, um, um, questions over here. Uh, how many uh, pre-K applications do you receive? Uh, Christina, do you have that information right there right now? We, we receive like a few hundred applications really. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, large amount of applications that we receive yearly. Um, so it is, uh, um, um, it is a, a you know, a, a pretty popular application, both for uh, tuition free and, uh, and tuition based, the same as in for kindergarten. Um, uh, we do not assign homework to, uh, if it says, it says K-4, so I we'll would assume it's pre-K-4 students, so we do not assign homework. Uh, as well as in kindergarten, we don't assign homework. We may begin uh, giving some assignments to kindergarten students uh, um, during the second, second semester. Um, um, Spanish instruction begins uh, in uh, sixth grade. Yes. Um, and actually, um, just the, since we're mentioning Spanish, uh, typically our Spanish students advance very quickly in the language because they're already bilingual. Uh, French is a, is a romance language, just like Spanish. And so structures and some of the words uh, may be similar as well. Uh, therefore, um, you know, we have uh, um, our, our kids, you know, grow into the learning of the language uh, at a pretty rapid pace. Um, how will uh, we know if we apply to tuition for tuition based that the uh, the code is different so you will need to look at your um you know the one app will take you through that you will see whether you uh, your uh, income will put you in this or the other bracket and then there will be a different code uh you know the the family center uh will help if and then you can always uh, reach out to uh, miss christina at admissions at lfno.org if you have any questions. Um, 
if, if, um, if you're transferring students from another immersion school, if that immersion school is accredited also by the French Ministry of Education, we do not, I'm sorry, the, the, we do not, um, they do not need to do their, um, um, their, their proficiency testing. Um, and um, Marina, the question and is that are we? I'm are sorry, we but there was something else on the question that yes, was. Yes, uh, it was. Are we expecting? Are we ex do you anticipate are we, opening in third through seven? Yes, uh, we do anticipate opening in third through seven. Yes, and yeah, if you need I guess to it was know more about our school, just tell her leave. She's uh, just afraid please to leave the door open. Um, make you know you can uh, reach out to um, Sofika Martin, uh, who's right here, or you may reach out also to uh, Hannah Benenson, who's uh, the uh, principal of our middle and high school or uh, Jan Collin, who is the director of the middle school. You can find all of the email addresses for uh, these uh, uh, staff members on our website. Uh, if you look at our website about us, you, there is a section with the uh, administrative staff and uh, you can find information and the email addresses for everybody. You can always uh, reach out to me, Marina Shane, M-S-C-H-O-E-N at elefino.org and I can direct you to the right person. <clears throat> um, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, no, uh, that just to be clear, do all pre-K students have to reapply to kindergarten? No, only tuition-based students need to reapply to kindergarten. Um, there is a question about the geographic priority. Um, so if there's a question about geographic priority, uh, the geographic priority is a kind of particular because we don't have any uh, say about that. The uh, one app is telling us that their algorithm takes into consideration uh, the geographic location of students. And so in within their algorithm, there is a, a, a some some geographic, uh, you know, uh, a data piece that uh, helps out with uh, trying to get students to the school where they're closest to. Um, but that's not something that is in the hands of Lise. Um, when are we notified of admission? Uh, Christina, can you answer this question? She put in the chat, oh, sorry, Christina, but she put the answer in the chat earlier. It's uh, early March. Late uh, April. Not, yes. Early March, late April. I mean, late March, early April. I'm sorry. They should receive an email from um, Enroll NOLA uh, providing them with their placement. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not see any other questions. It's uh, just a few minutes after four, so we kept uh, on our uh, timeline. Um, we want to thank you for participating tonight. And again, um, uh, uh, how do we choose? I'm sorry, there's one more question. How do we choose uh, who gets accepted? We don't choose. It is actually the one app, app lottery. So you apply to one app, and then one app basically has a, a, a lottery system, and students are assigned to us. Basically, it, it is not in the hands of we say. It is the one app, the one app um, that um, um, runs the uh, uh, the uh, admissions, um, that the runs the enrollment uh, program um, for our school and several other schools at the, um, in New Orleans. Uh, um, yes, uh, uh, Sophie, do you wanna answer the question about the baccalaureate? Well, it's gonna be very difficult to answer that question in one minute, Marina. Uh, I, I would encourage that parent, if you have a personal question, I'm gonna put my email. We also had several open houses for high school. Uh, with the um, talking about the French uh, baccalaureate, but I'm putting my email here. It's um, uh, I'm happy to provide a, a written uh, written answer. Just to be very brief, the French baccalaureate is basically the end of high the end of high school in France. 
So it's kind of like, uh, it's not exactly the equivalent of the, uh, for example, the TOPS high school diploma, but it is a French high school diploma, just to be very quick. Okay, this brings us at the end of our presentation. Thank you uh, to our panelists for being here tonight. And uh, thank you to uh, prospective parents for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing your children uh, at, in our school and roaming our hallways. <laughs> so thank you again and have a beautiful evening. Thank you.